time for Voice of Indy. Your hosts today are Beam Weeks, author, producer, and marketing monster for independent multimedia publisher Fresh Ink Group, and Stephen Jeeves, author, producer, composer, and publisher for Fresh Ink Group. Beam, I don't know if people can hear me or not, but I'm not hearing you, Beam. I'm just hearing noise and distortion. Are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm your guy. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need. I think you're gonna need to call in. So, okay. assuming people can hear me, welcome to show number two one seven of the Voice of Indy podcast. I'm Stephen G's, and with me here is Beam Weeks. We'll be calling in in a second so that we can try to get his audio back on again. Uh, it's been a hot week here in Alabama, but we've been busy putting out lots of books, working on things, getting things moving. We've got a couple of new book trailers out. We've got several new books that have been released this week. We've got a couple more books that are being released in the next week or so. So are we out there, Beam? Hello. All right. Well, let's just start with a couple of announcements here. We've got... I'm here. There you are. Okay. So you called in? I'm called in. It just takes a minute. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> just welcome to everybody to the show. I was about to mention that we've got a new trailer for a new book that just came out this week called Journey Through the Lens, A Creative Guide to Wildlife Photography. And that's by Angie Birmingham, who happens to be tonight's guest. So we're looking forward to learning about photography and talking to Angie and talking about some of the photo shoots she's done. But in the meantime, she's got a new trailer. Get over there to the Fresh Ink Group channel on YouTube and check out the trailer for Journey Through the Lens by Angie Birmingham. So how are you doing today, Beam? I am doing well. And uh, what we're going to talk about here, I got two things to mention. Number one, the short story contest that Ooh. is still going on, but it's it's winding down. Uh, we picked up a couple more uh, short story entries this past week. So you're going to want to get yours in. If you're an author and you've got some short stories lying around, uh, send them to us. Go over to freshinkgroup.com, click on the contest tab, and uh, just follow the prompts and, and upload those, and we'll get those. The other thing is, is we got a new book out that is out. It's not out now. It's out in pre-sale, and it is A Noble Bargain by Jan Sykes. It is part of the Bargain Bargainer series. And uh, we have a, I'm working on a trailer uh, right now. It's, I'm just getting started with it, but uh, it'll be definitely be ready by the time uh, the book comes out. But we're going to have, try to have it out a lot sooner so it can help that pre-sale stuff yeah. move along. So uh, if you want to be part of tonight's show, you want to call in, you want to hit us up with a, with a post on X, here's how you can go about doing that. Call 516-453-9902 right now with your questions or comments for tonight's guest. Or post a note on Twitter with hashtag Fresh Ink Group in the body of the tweet and we'll read it on air. That's 516-453-9902 or hashtag Fresh Ink Group on Twitter. All right. We've got another new book that just came out about a week ago. This one's a novel. And this one's from Carlisle Toms. Now, we previously published his The Calling Dream and Edge of Smoke, uh, and he, he writes some real uh, gritty, intense, thriller, personal character development kinds of stories. He's a guy who grew up in the Ozarks, living in Texas right now, and he's, he's just got some cool stories. This one's called Sunrise Over the Pumpkin Patch. It just came out. It's set in the 60s. It features some hippies. got some cool 60s-looking cover art on it, and we've got a new trailer for it, don't we, Beam? Yeah, we've got the fourth edition of that trailer. Uh, you know, I, po- I, I put this trailer together and I put it up and, he, you know, Carlisle finds something that needs to be tweaked or changed or whatever. So uh, this is the fourth edition of it, and uh, hopefully this is it. Uh, this time it was something to do with the closed captions, and I learned something new. You can fix closed captioning in YouTube. You don't have to take it down and, and uh, you know, tweak it in Premiere Pro or whatever. But, uh, yeah, so that's up. And uh, it's it's a cool video. It's a cool book. Uh, get over to uh, the YouTube channel. But speaking of book trailers as well, Nowhere to Go But Tomorrow is out now. And this is actually doing quite well for author Nell Cooper. And uh, she's doing some uh, some promotions for it. She's out and about and doing some stuff. 
And uh, if you want to find out about that, we've got a newsletter, which you'll hear about here in a minute. Uh, but also, there's a book trailer, uh, and that's over on our YouTube channel. Get over to YouTube, uh, Fresh Ink Group, and uh, while you're over there, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and like the videos that you watch. Give them those thumbs up. And uh, speaking of that newsletter, here's how you can find out about everything going on in the world of Fresh Ink Group, in the world of the Voice of Indie podcast, and in the world of indie publishing. Stay on top of these podcasts and all things Fresh Ink Group with our weekly digital newsletter. New releases, videos, stories, excerpts, interviews, and more. Sign up now on the homepage of freshinkgroup.com and be the one who knows what's what. What, what, what? All right. Let's take a quick look at the top 25 print bestsellers from Fresh Ink Group. In the number 25 slot, it's J. Ash Looney. We haven't seen him up here in a little bit. Figuratively speaking, thesaurus of expressions and phrases. That's uh, one of his two, what we call word books. And those traditionally have done very well in India. People wanting to learn how to speak American English. So figuratively speaking, thesaurus of expressions and phrases by J. Ash Looney is at number 25. In the number 24 slot, another book by J. Ash Looney. This one's cool. Whoopi Likes Her Bacon Crispy, 65 Fascinating Excerpts from the Memoirs of Famous and Infamous Women. Man, there's a great variety of women in that book, isn't there, Bean? Yes, there are. Yeah. Uh, we've had that one out for a while now. Yeah, and uh, we uh, we commissioned an artist to do caricatures of all 65 of these women, and it's just a beautiful book. Very cool, so check that out. We got Kenneth Lindquist, How to Teach Driving, the Instructor's Edition, at number 23. At number 22, How to Start and Run Your Own Food Truck Business in Tennessee by A.K. Wingler. She's also got Florida and Georgia books for food truck industry. How to Paint an American by Andrew McGregor. Pandemonium and Puzzle Town, an illustrated chapter book for children by B.A. Johnson. She's the author of the Sassy series as well. Jeannie Sharp, A Chance to Choose, a Second Chances novel. Uh, we published that one a while back. We only do the print edition of that. Jeannie took back the digital edition, so you can buy the uh, ebook from Kindle from her or from Fresh Ink Group. You can get the print editions. Now that brings us to 17. There must be something in the water. Anthology of the Fourth Generation, Descendants of Green Pond After the Emancipation by Abigail H. Hugh uh, she's also author, co-author of the next book on our list, just above that, Abigail H. Guinea and Mary L. Smalls, Mr. President, I've Got Your Back, the First Ladies of South Carolina State University. Now, uh, we've got a cool trailer for all of these books over on uh, YouTube in the Fresh Ink Group channel, which we hope you will subscribe if you don't already when you go over there to check them out. Mr. President, uh, Beam had used two different pieces of music, and we decided we liked the one that was in the audio commercial, so he switched it out this week. So if you've already seen that commercial, go look at it again. It's got new music. Now, Nowhere to Go But Tomorrow by Nell Cooper. The hardcover edition is up there in the teens. And then Celebrate 98, the untold stories behind the Tennessee Football Balls 1998 National Championship by Dave Hooker. Now, we're going to have Dave on the show in a few weeks, aren't we, Beam? Uh, we are. We are going to have him on October the 16th. I just booked him today and uh, got that show all set up. So, uh, yeah, he's been on before. Uh, he's, a, he's a fun interview. Uh, he's very sports-oriented. He's a sports podcaster and a sports writer, and uh, he's really into college football. So we figured, why not bring him back on the show now that college football season has started? Yeah, that whole college football fad is starting to stick, so I think it's going to be around for a while. Yeah. Next up, The Rise and Fall of a Construction Giant, The History, People, and Stories of CFW Construction by Dick Ferrer, Jr. He's a fella lives up there in Fayetteville, Tennessee, and his dad and a couple of people started this company a while back, grew it into a massive international operation, and then everything fell apart. Scandals, deaths, plane crashes, I mean, it got, it got uh, kind of ugly. Ultimately, it went out of business. And the building that they operated out of is still sitting up there in Fayetteville, Tennessee. I've driven past it a number of times. And if you've ever been in Fayetteville and wondered what's the story behind that building, here it is, The Rise and Fall of a Construction Giant by Dick Ferrer, Jr. We've got Janice D. Tony, Daddy Yo-Yo, and the Legendary Marble Tournament. That's an illustrated chapter book for kids about bullying. 
And then above that, Dr. Helen Burrell, American Agony, the Opioid War Against Patients in Pain. Now, we've also got the paperback edition of The Rise and Fall of Construction Giant by Dick Ferrer, Jr. So both editions are riding high on this list. And I, I know. that always tickles me, being just, just uh, one yeah. that we thought would be a small little regional seller. And here we are all these years later, and the thing just keeps coming back. So here we go again, Celebrate 98, paperback edition by Dave Hooker. Mr. President, I've Got Your Back by Hugh Guinea and Smalls, and that's the hardcover edition. And that brings us to the top five. Number five, paperback, Mark Herndon. The High Road, Memories from a Long Trip. You're never surprised when you hear that one, are you, Beam? No, that's uh, that's the consistent seller for yeah. eight years now. Yeah, that one uh, that one helps buy the, the punch and cookies at the office Christmas party. So it's also <laughs> it's also in the number two slot. The hardcover edition, The High Road, Memories from a Long Trip by Country Music Hall of Fame drummer Mark Herndon. I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you're a fan of Alabama, if you're a fan of Mark Herndon, if you're a fan of country music, if you just like to have cool books with author signatures in them, you can order that book from Mark Herndon yourself at markherndon.com. Now, you can get it everywhere else, Amazon and you know, Barnes and & Noble and, and whatnot. But if you order it directly from Mark, he will not only autograph it for you, but he will annotate it for you. You know, put a little note in there or whatever, especially if you want to, like, give it as a gift. Say you've got uh, a friend or a sister who's a, who's a drummer fan or a Mark Herndon fan and get him to write, hey, happy birthday, Cindy, uh, keep the beat, you know, or something like that. Anyway, that's Mark Herndon, the high road. Now, that gets us to what's in the four, three, and one slots. Number four, hey, it's a retired U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander, Jerry Pace, Submariner. 30 Years of Hijinks and Keeping the Fleet Afloat, the paperback edition is in the number four slot. And then we've got a NBC Evening Newscast anchor, David Carroll. I Won't Be Your Escape Goat, David Carroll's Homemade Social Media Blunders. You don't like that book, do you, B? Oh, that's a funny, funny book. That's a laugh-out-loud book. And when we say that, we're not just you know speaking hyperbole. We're not no. just trying to sell the book. It is literally a laugh-out-loud funny book. Yeah, and uh, he's working on another one, so we're looking at maybe having another one here in a couple of months. That gets us to number one. Our number one print bestseller from Fresh Ink Group is a paperback edition of a novel, the first adult novel by Nell Cooper, Nowhere to Go But Tomorrow. What's that book about, Beam? That is a book about uh, basically young love. Uh, a girl b- grows up in the uh, state home for uh, handicapped uh, people, and uh, she meets a boy there, and they grow up together. And as they're teenagers, they fall in love. And when she gets word of a potential surgery for her that's going to change her life, she gets out of there. In the middle of the night, she leaves. And now he's got to go, and he's he's graduated, and he's he's uh, moved on out of the home. He's got to, he's going to go find this girl, and uh, it's a uh, based uh, on a true place here in Michigan. And uh, just a, it's when when Stephen says it's an adult book, it's not a dirty book. It's she's written it. It's geared towards adults because her previous book was geared towards children. This yeah. one's geared towards the adults. But uh, a wonderful book. I gave it a five star review. So, yeah. So, a copy. so congratulations to everybody who got your books in the top 25 print bestsellers this week. And all the rest of you who didn't quite make the top 25 years was at number 26. You can count on that. So it'll get in there next time. Now, over on Twitter, we got a comment from Verwain Greenhoe. He says, it's raining like crazy here in the armpit of Florida as Helene makes her presence known. Nonetheless, the wife and I are gathered around the computer speakers as author Angie Birmingham. Angie Birmingham talked with Fresh Ink Group hosts, Stephen G's, and Beam Weeks. I'm getting excited. We're getting close to talking to Angie here. Yes, we are. But I want to throw a congratulations out to author, Fresh Ink Group author, Robert G. Willis-Croft. His key to lost civilization won the NABE Pinnacle Book Achievement Award. Congratulations, Robert, Dr. Willis-Croft. And uh, I just published his uh, Operation Vela Redux this evening now it might take a couple days for it to populate and get over where it's supposed to be on amazon and all your other places at barnes and noble and and 
wherever you buy your books. But uh, keep your eyes and ears out for that. We'll be promoting the heck out of that in the day, coming days. Operation Bella Redux, a Mac McDowell mission. And if you happen to miss one of these shows, uh, we've got an archive, and you can go in there and pick through it and see uh, who's all been on the show, and uh, you can make a playlist and go and listen to these shows. And here's how you can find the archive. Find your favorite show in the Voice of Indie archive on YouTube at Fresh Ink Group, StephenG's.com, BeamWeeks.com, FreshInkGroup.com, and on Spotify. And now, you can listen on iHeartRadio and tune in. Just search The Voice of Indie, all one word. A shocking proposal that changes everything. Desperate to honor his father's dying wish, Lakin Martin vows to do whatever it takes to save the family farm. Once the Army discharges him following World War II, Lakin returns to Missouri to find his legacy in shambles and in jeopardy. A foreclosure notice from the bank doubles the threat. He appeals to the local banker for more time, a chance to rebuild, plant, and harvest crops, and time to heal far away from the noise of bombs and gunfire. But the banker firmly denies his request. Now what? Then the banker makes an alternative proposition marry his unwanted daughter, Sarah Beth, in exchange for a two-year extension. Out of options, money, and time, Lakin agrees to the bargain. Now he has two years to make a living off the land while he shares his life with a stranger. Read A Beggar's Bargain, book one in the Bargainer series by best-selling author Jan Sykes. Available worldwide from multimedia publisher Fresh Ink Group in jacketed hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. A Beggar's Bargain by Jan Sykes. A true testament of character, resilience, and the magic of never giving up. The year is 1948. And folks in the sawmill town of Crossett, Arkansas, work hard and play hard. Oliver Quinn does both. Oliver is the son of Irish immigrants who firmly believe in pursuing the American dream. His deepest desire is to play Major League Baseball. He only needs one chance to prove himself. Rose Blaine is living in a nightmare where dreams don't exist. She's suffered for years at the hands of her violent moonshiner father and his partner. During a brutal attack, she must fight back or die. The aftermath is devastating. Fueled by desperation, Rose strikes a life-changing bargain with Oliver. If he'll take her and her brother to St. Louis, Missouri, she'll introduce Oliver to her uncle, a baseball legend. While their journey is fraught with unseen perils, they forge an unbreakable bond and make surprising allies. When destiny throws them a curveball, they must find the courage to create a hopeful future out of the ashes of shattered dreams with newfound fortitude. Read A Noble Bargain, book two following A Beggar's Bargain in the Bargainer series by best-selling author Jan Sykes. A Beggar's Bargain and A Noble Bargain are available worldwide from multimedia publisher Fresh Ink Group in jacketed hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. The Bargainer Series by Jan Sykes. All right. Yeah, get out there. Pre order yards. Yeah, now we've got author Nell Cooper listening in. She couldn't get her comment to post over on Twitter X, so she sent it directly to me. She welcomes Angie Birmingham to the show and says, Our sound is wonderful tonight. So, hey, let's sound good, Beam. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm going through my phone, but, you know. Yeah. What are we going to do about it? All right, let's welcome tonight's guest. Now, most of the time, I never actually get to meet the authors that we work with for years, sometimes decades, and uh, the people that we publish or whatnot. Uh, this is a case where this is a new author. This is our first book by her. But she and her friend were traveling, passed through Alabama, and stopped in for a visit. So I actually got to meet Angie Birmingham in person. That was very, very cool. 
So tonight's guest is Angie Birmingham. She's an award-winning photographer who discovered her love for the outdoors as a teenager shortly after her family moved to Lake Tahoe. Her passion for landscape photography broadened into wildlife photography after she became a bird watcher who achieved an annual count of 202 species. Wow, that's a lot. Angie is a graduate of New York Institute of Photography and is nearly done with her master's degree at Professional Photographers of America, PPA. Her first publication was in Diesel Magazine. She has been featured in Focus on Texas Magazine and on their website numerous times. Angie started offering photography workshops and private lessons in the summer of 2019. She does meetups with local photographers in the South Texas area and has a Facebook group called WTF Stop, you know, like what the F Stop, which was born when her friends kept asking, hey, Angie, what is the F Stop? Through the Lens is Angie's first how-to photography book. She lives with her husband, Jeff, amid her beloved wildlife in the Corpus Christi area of the Texas Gulf Coast. That's not course. The Texas Gulf Coast. Say that five times fast. Welcome to the show, Angie. Welcome, Angie. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good to, good to have you here. Yeah. So, uh, Thanks. It's good to be first, here. First off, uh, what what got you into uh, photography? Well, it was actually my dad. He, um, When I was a kid, he used to go out and take pictures and then go into this dark room and develop them and I was just fascinated by it, and I would go in there and help him. And and then when they offered it in my high school, I took it, and that was pretty much the end of it. I mean, I was addicted to photography after that. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dave, you said we have a couple of callers, right? Uh, we do. Yeah. Why don't we uh, go ahead and play the new world premiere trailer for Journey Through the Lens so people know a little bit more about the book and then we can uh, start taking a few calls. All right. In Journey Through the Lens, creative guide to wildlife photography, celebrated wildlife photographer Angie Birmingham introduces burgeoning photo takers to their photo equipment and helps them develop the techniques for stunning outdoor photography. From mastering exposure to optimizing focus and lighting, Angie shows how to find the right style to tell visual stories and present compelling images. Learn landscape composition along with the best ways to shoot animals, birds, and flowers. Find out how skilled photographers capture all the details while manipulating backgrounds and moods. Order a digital copy in your favorite ebook format or collect a print edition in full-size paperback or case laminate hardcover. Available worldwide from your favorite bookseller. From newcomers to professionals, everybody who loves taking wildlife pictures will thrill at how easy Angie Birmingham makes it for you to continue your own journey through the lens. All right. So we have, before we go to the callers, we've got a uh, comment over here on Twitter from Patty Wiseman, author Patty Wiseman. She says, excited to hear Angie tonight. So glad you got the book published. Well, thanks for chiming in, Patty. We appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Patty. She's the whole reason I'm here today. Oh, really? She she referred you yeah. to us? She referred uh, me to you. Yeah, we, yeah. We, wow. tend to lose, we tend to lose track of that over time. And after so many years, it's like, how do we know you again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> remember, we were in line at the Dollar General. And I said, I've got a book to publish. You know where to go? <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for the referral, Patty. This is definitely an excellent book. I edited this one myself, and I don't often do that because I wanted to learn all of the techniques and stuff, and I definitely learned a lot. In fact, uh, I'm going to have to reread it again and try some of these things myself. But uh, cool book, Angie. Thank you. Okay, so so we're going to go to the phone lines. Here's the thing, callers. Pay attention. There are a couple of Texas calls here with a 361 area code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I bring you on live, I'm going to say the last four digits of your phone number. So be on your toes and listening because that's you. And the first one, let me click that button. The first one is going to be uh, the last four digits of your phone number. It's a Texas number. It's 2028. Those are the last four digits. Hello, you are on the air. Hi, this is Angie's mom. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Angie's mom. Hey, welcome to the show. 
Hey, hey. My biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, he asked yeah. me, sent me a text and uh, said she was going to be on, so I called at, right at 7. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice book. Nice book. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mom would always say they're going to buy your book, but when you go over to their house, you say, you want me to autograph that for you? Oh, uh, I lend it to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So her first so, book. Oh. So you've. I'm guessing you've always encouraged her in in her pursuit of photography. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, we all love photography. Um, her father and myself. Um, yeah, we all have loved it. Um, her dad and I were doing it back when you had to pay for the film, right? And we were poor, so we didn't always get everything developed. So. You know, digital's great. Yeah, there, there was two two huge differences from back then. Is you couldn't afford to take a whole bunch of different shots and try different settings and stuff. You had right. to try to get it. You had to try to get it right up front, and then you That's couldn't tell if you got it right until you went to know. you know photo mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then you come home with all kinds of yeah bad bad photos. But anyway, yeah, no. So it's a it's a great hobby. Well, no, it's not a hobby. It's it's her business, and she's yeah. doing very well with it. Mm. Yeah, very, very happy. Uh, she's doing so well, and she loves well. She loves it. And when you love what you're doing, it's not like work at all, is it? Mm-hmm. No. Mm. All so right. Anyway, I'm going to let you go so you can get to your next caller. Talk to you later. All right. Well, thanks, Mom. Calling. I'm Angie's mom. <laughs> Bye. Okay, uh, so the the next one is going to be, it's another uh, Texas number, and it's the last Texas number on there. So it's the last four digits are 6591. And uh, you are on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling uh, from? Goody. Good evening. This is Charmaine Nelson, and I'm calling Hi, from Charmaine. Corpus Christi. Hey. Well, welcome to the show. Charmaine. Well, thank you. Hey, Angie, congratulations. Thank you. So, Charmaine is the um, is the inspiration of WTF Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to tell him that uh, I, I am the one that is guilty because every time we would go shoot, I would ask her, what's the F-stop, Angie? <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah. And Andy and I have been shooting together for, Andy's been shooting, of course, for a long time, but I've only been shooting maybe uh, six or seven years, but she's taught me a whole lot, and um, she's a great teacher. She really is. Well, fantastic. Thank you. So, since she's a great teacher, Angie, what is the f stop? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you a little story here. There's a lot more to it than the f stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. It's uh F eight. It's be there and be great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good awesome. answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did have a question for the book, Angie. Um uh-huh. for other for other listeners. Um what uh I was gonna say what age group did you uh gear this book for, but really more the question is uh what a level of a photographer did you gear the book for? Is it a beginner, intermediate, advanced? Um, I think that I think somebody from every level of photography could probably learn something from this. I mean, if you're an advanced photographer, a lot of it would be very remedial to you, but you never know. You know, I mean, my bring something back from long time memory of, oh yeah, you know, I should pay attention to that a little more often, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's geared, it's geared really towards the beginner because it starts off at basically what a JPEG and a raw image is. And then it just takes it from there and it, it covers all the different niches of nature photography from landscape all the way down to macro. So it covers it all. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you. Well, that was my question. 
<laughs> All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Charmaine. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Charmaine. Yeah, thanks, Charmaine. You bet. Y'all have a good evening, and I'll see you later, Angie. All right. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. Now, over on uh, X, we have a comment from Robert McKenzie. He's a Scottish guy down in Texas. He says, hi, Angie Birmingham. What's your favorite? He's got a couple of questions. What's your favorite camera, and what is your favorite film? Any tips for time-lapse photos? I see you are in Corpus Christi. What are some of your favorite Texas places, scenes, and subjects? Okay, so there's a whole bunch there. Uh, plus, it's got to click to see more. <laughs> so, he, said, I used to take photo- he says, I used to take photos of old gas stations in Texas, and that's cool because I see a lot of those online, the old photos yeah. of the old gas stations. Oh, yeah. So the first Definitely. one is, what's your favorite camera, and then what is your favorite film? So my favorite camera is the one that I currently shoot right now. It's an A9 um, Mark III uh, Sony and um, I love it because it's fast when I need it to be, and it has pre-capture for those wonderful birds. <laughs> and, okay, then uh, the, the other one was any tips for time-lapse photo. Oh, wait a minute. What's your favorite film? Yeah. Oh, gosh, I don't even know anymore. I guess it would have been Kodak was what I always used back in the day. Yeah. But I haven't used that since probably 19... That's all you need to say. 1989? (laughs) I don't know. It's a long time. Yeah, it sounds like breaking up again. Uh, So any tips for time-lapse photos? So time-lapse photos, I would recommend taking it out of auto balance, auto white balance, and always doing it manually. Hmm. Okay. Okay. There you go. Now there's one other uh, comment here. Uh, this one is from Verwayne Greenhill, and he says, uh, "I was the track photographer at Crystal Motor Speedway for seven years. That's up here in my neck of the woods, by the way. There's a real okay. thrill of standing 12 feet from the the edge of the track, or no, 12 inches maybe. No, it's yeah, yeah, it's 12 feet from the edge of the track with the you say 12 12 inches, and you're going to get whacked by a car." From the track yeah. with a late model sliding sideways through turns three and four at 85 miles per hour. Loved it. Okay, that's uh, Verwayne Greenhall. Uh, stay safe down there, Verwayne, with that storm coming in on you. Uh, you guys want to take uh, another phone call? Yeah, let's do that. This one here is from uh, area code uh, 205 uh, from your neck of the woods, Stephen. Uh, Birmingham. Hello, Birmingham. You're on the air. What's your name? Hello? Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, uh, I'm Braden. Hey, Braden. Welcome uh, to the show, Braden. Braden. Is that uh, photographer Braden Dexter Green? Yes. Oh, all right. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, Verwayne Greenhoe was just talking about standing just a few feet away from the track when the cars are whizzing by. I see you stand just a few feet away from the railroad track when 100 million <laughs> tons of freight trains coming at you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I bet that's a thrill. Oh. Cool. Uh, Do you have a question or comment for Angie? Yeah, I was uh, wondering if she could, like, recommend a beginner camera for uh, my uh, social, my high school social media team because they're still shooting with a Rebel T1 that's older than I am. Wow. (laughs) So I would recommend, since they're shooting Canon and they already have the Canon glass, I would recommend that they go with either the Canon R10 or the Canon R8. Uh, they don't okay. break the bank, and they're really good cameras, and you can get the adapter and use all of your Canon lenses that you have now. Oh. Okay, very cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Uh, you, you got any other questions, Braden? Uh, no, that was it. All right, Thank well, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for calling in. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thanks for calling yeah. in. It was nice talking to you again. Yeah. Okay, Beam, you want to run a couple of commercials here, and uh, we can get back to the phones. All righty. Still Not Enough examines the plight of minority millennials in the workforce. 
Janelle A. Jordan details her own perspective molding cultural upbringing along with professional encounters hindered by others' preconceived notions and unconscious biases. She shares examples that are relatable to many with similar experiences. The scars from every denial fueled the desire for each minority millennial to do more. This book also guides leaders managing today's DEI employees. Norms are evolving, and organizations must adapt or be left behind. Proudly published by Fresh Ink Group in all print and digital formats worldwide, Still Not Enough brings transparency to the challenges of today's younger and more inclusive workforce. It's 1967, and promiscuous small-town girl, Lavella, can't wait to get away from her controlling mother to make her own life. She hooks up with Earl, an ugly hippie, rebelling against his rich father. At a time of severe racial tensions and the burgeoning civil rights movement, Earl whisks her off to San Francisco to experience the summer of love. Acid trips, a gay love affair, and deep betrayal eventually lead to Lavella's pregnancy with a biracial child that Earl will accept, but which Earl's father won't. Lavella quickly discovers there is more to her mother's control than she ever could have imagined. Sunrise Over the Pumpkin Patch is a rich family saga by Carlisle Toms, author of The Calling Dream and Edge of Smoke. Proudly published by Fresh Ink Group, Sunrise Over the Pumpkin Patch is available worldwide in jacketed hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. Okay, so uh, we are going to go back to the phones, and uh, we got a couple of them lined up. So we're going to go to this one is uh, area code two eight one, which I believe is Houston, Texas. You're on the air. What's your name? Hi, this is Lisa. Can y'all hear me? Hi, Lisa. Can hear you, Lisa. Hi. Uh, Welcome to the show. Me. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask about the uh, the different classes that she has, uh, the different workshops. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're so amazing and. Um, so if she could kind of describe a little bit of the different ones and with that, and I just, I'm sorry, I'm late chiming in on everything, um, getting the family taken care of. Um, but um, my question is when you are going to do a workshop, uh, depending on where it is, would you bring different equipment or haul everything out? What is the best way to go about that? Well, um, if you're coming on a landscape or a uh, bird photography, um, I would bring probably everything you have um, from long lenses to short lenses. And, but if you're coming on a wildflower tour, I would probably just bring your short stuff and your macro. Um, that would be the, the best thing to do. Um, the birds require long lenses, of course. The longer, the better. Um, in your landscapes, the wider, the better. And when I do workshops, um, I recommend um, a list. I give like a list of equipment that I recommend. And if you don't have that equipment, I can recommend a place where you can rent the equipment for the workshop so you have it, uh, so you can use it and try it out. Oh, hmm. awesome. And I have another question. Um, what is your take on filters, and do you have a favorite? I do. I <laughs> like, it's called Freewell, and it's a magnetic filter system. And it's everything from a polarizer all the way down to, I think, up to, I think it's 16 neutral density. So it's nearly black. And that helps slow down the shutter in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, All so right. if we're going out to shoot blue bonnets in hill country, a lot of macro, huh? Yep. Yep. Mm. Macro. I actually, I actually really like just using my 70 to 200 lens 
when I'm doing wildflowers. I, I like that perspective on the flowers. The macro, it just, you're so close, and the 70 to 200, you can get, like, bees and other insects, and you're not, like, all up in their face making them nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right. well, thanks cool. for calling in, Lisa. We appreciate yeah, thanks, that. Lisa. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're, we got a couple more callers here. We're going to go up uh, up north towards the Chicago area. Um, Pat Guthrie, I believe this is, on hold. So uh, we'll bring her in and see if she's got a question. Uh, hello, Patricia Guthrie. Hi. Hi How is everybody doing? Yeah. Doing Good. Fine. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. This is very interesting. I've never really been into photography, except with my little cell phone, which I have a great time shooting stuff. <laughs> um, I was just kind of wondering if you ever do art gallery shows, photography shows. Mm. No, I have not done those. Um, I've never, re- I mean, I've hung a few photos here in our local galleries, but I've never really pursued that, but it's definitely been in the back of my mind. Yeah, yeah hmm. I would think that would be really interesting. Yeah, it'd be a be. good place to sell books. Well, yes, yes yeah, it is. <coughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that would I be. I don't have any other questions. <laughs> that was really interesting. So many of the questions that I had have already been answered. But you sound, okay? sound fascinating. We aim to be thorough. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so Patricia, you think you might uh, get a starter camera and try some of the things in Angie's book? Well, it's a good cell phone, a, a way to start okay. it. Yeah, a yeah, lot of that guys. stuff, you can apply it to your cell phone as well. Oh, yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah, especially all this stuff about composition and backgrounds and lighting and things like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes, you can. You're right. Mm-hmm. And there's a few apps. If you have, like, an iPhone, there's a few apps that you can get where you can actually um, choose your aperture, shutter, and ISO. Uh. Cool. Okay. Really? Yeah. It really yeah. is. Um, I've done a little stuff. Not much. Not much with that, but I will look to see what my phone has in it. And, um, if I can get a um, an app for something, it might be a lot of fun to do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yep. Thanks for calling okay, in, well, Patricia. Yeah, thanks for calling, Pat. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks. I'm you too. Hold. Take care. I'm going to stay on and hold. Okay. okay. Now, if anybody else wants to call in, the number is 516-453-9902. We're talking to celebrated wildlife photographer Angie Birmingham, talking about her new book, Journey Through the Lens, A Creative Guide to Wildlife Photography. Call in with those questions. Yeah, the other caller uh, dropped off. So if uh, you call back in, we'll take your call. So There was another Texas call, so uh, we'll wait and see. Yeah, okay. So, Angie, can you kind of give us kind of a run-through of what all to expect in the book? I mean, we're going to talk about equipment. We're going to talk about composition, backgrounds, lighting, all those kinds of things. Yeah. um, So, I mean, the book is, it starts off very basic. um, Starts off basically um, telling you how to set up your camera from day one. tells you the difference between RAW and JPEG formats. And then it goes ahead and it jumps on into exposure and explains what it is and how to get it. And then then you also, then I also got a little section there on histograms, how to read them, and your basic composition. And then there's a chapter in there, it's called hyperfocal distance, which Hmm. The circle of confusion, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's one that somebody will probably go back and read multiple times because there's a lot to that. And but I, I actually just simplify it in the chapter as well, um, so that you don't have to have all those charts, you don't have to go through and do all that multiplication and all that stuff. So it's a good chapter to get that book. Just 
that uh, for that little segment. Yeah, and, then, like. and then I go over all the different lenses and what you would need. And I mean, it, it covers every aspect of nature photography. I've tried to cover everything. Hmm. Yeah, I also, there's a couple of things that I like in particular. One is you've got chapters devoted specifically to things like wildlife photography, bird photography, and small animals and stuff. And those are some great mm-hmm. pointers in there. But uh, the thing that really stood out for me is I, I've been taking pictures for a lot of years as an amateur, and I, I like to be very careful how I frame a picture. But I mm-hmm. was never never really knowledgeable about or any good at manipulating backgrounds, getting that blur, that motion look, that glow, those different kinds of looks that I always see in photos and wondered how they did that. And mm-hmm. you cover that in this book. I, tell us what kind of tips you give for that. Uh, well, the number one is to do your lens wide open, which means that if you have an F4 lens, shoot it at F4 and give your subject plenty of background or plenty of room between the background. Uh, That's the number one key. You don't want to put your subject right up against the background. uh, Otherwise, it will end up being in focus and be uh, distracting. Um, And the aperture is mainly the the big thing, is the aperture. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is the f-stop. What's the f-stop? We're back to that again. <laughs> We're back to that again. And a word that I've been seeing for years and never understood it, bokeh, B-O-K-E-H, what is that? Boca. Boca. Boca, that's that nice, creamy background that you get, the non-distracting background. I want it. <laughs> yep. That's what everybody pays the money for when they buy those big, expensive lenses. Here you see the real mm-hmm. big lenses running around. Mm-hmm. That's why they that's why they buy those lenses so they can get that background. Yeah, very cool. Well, it's kind of expensive. Yeah, they are very that's, expensive. That's, that's not a cheap. That's not a cheap. Uh, a cheap thing no. to get into. Yeah. No, but I mean, you can achieve it. With the other lenses, it's just a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. You have to work harder at it. Mm, It's worth it, though. Yeah, definitely worth it. All right, so we have a question over on Twitter. We'll run a couple of ads here and see what question Jill Mayer has for Angie Birmingham. Okay. Now, from Fresh Ink Group and best-selling author Robert G. Williscroft, the Mac McDowell Mission Series. With a security clearance above top secret, Saturation Dive Team Officer in Charge Mac McDowell leads his team into critical Cold War counter-Soviet missions. Watch Mac prove what brave men can achieve under real pressure, the kind that will steal your air and crush the life out of you. In Operation Ivy Belt, it's the summer of 1972 when Mac and his off-the-books deep water espionage group are conducting a daring undersea wiretapping operation to gather Russian intel and avert world war. Join nuclear submariner Mac McDowell for extreme diving, a battle with giant squid, and more as he risks everything in the most dangerous operation yet. In Operation Icebreaker, Mac McDowell is leading his submarine team for a mission to lay SOSIS arrays under the Arctic ice when they clash with a highly automated Alpha-class Soviet submarine. Overwhelmed by mechanical problems, the Soviet crew abandons their sub near Point Barrow, Alaska. The skipper launches DSRV-1 Mystic so Mac and his crew can board the empty sub and gather intelligence. The arrival of an even more advanced Soviet sub leads to breathtaking (coughs) underwater clashes with the specter of war looming. Will Mac and his crew be sunk by the Soviets, or will they safely return to Alaska, where Mac's new love, Kate, anxiously waits? In Operation Arctic Sting, Mac McDowell and his team capture the abandoned Soviet sub. Piloting their prize through the ice pack to the U.S. East Coast, they must evade or confront other Soviet subs trying to recover the ship or sink it. Breathtaking deep-sea clashes erupt, including hand-to-hand combat with Soviet Morskoi Spetsnaz divers under the ice. Too far from Toothis to escape, the Americans are accosted by a five-ton orca. Will Mac's ship survive long enough to reach friendly waters, or will the men become just another meal for a deadly whale? 
In Operation Whiteout, Mac McDowell's Toothis tangles with Argentine subs in the South Atlantic, then confronts a Chicom sub off Thurston Island. Escorting a Taiwanese sub, Toothis is attacked by a Chinese Han-class sub and a North Korean AIP sub. Will Mac complete his mission, or will he meet his watery grave on the Pacific's abyssal plain? The McDowell Mission Series by Robert G. Willis Croft is available worldwide in jacketed hardcovers, paperbacks, ebooks from Kindle to Nook and Kobo and more, plus exclusive audiobook editions with music and sound effects. The Mac McDowell Mission Series is proudly published by Fresh Ink Group. Take a breath and dive in for thrilling submarine adventures in every Mac McDowell Mission. Dave Hooker here, longtime Tennessee sports writer, and I know that true Tennessee fans are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the legendary 1998 Tennessee Volunteers Championship season. I'll tell you what, you celebrate 98, I try to bring the full color photos and detail the transfer of power from Peyton Manning to Al Wilson, the preparation to win the first BCS National Championship, the locker room dynamics, and the challenges of a team rising above deep tragedy. Key plays include interception, a fumble maybe against Arkansas, and a bit of trickeration. Also, there's that Florida game. I analyze the leadership, the strategies, and the players' commitment to each other and share what we are still learning from this team even today. Discover what happened to those heroes of the gridiron and where they are now. Proudly published by the Fresh Ink Group, Celebrate 98 is available in all the digital forms, but you can also get your own soft cover or jacketed hardcover keepsake edition from booksellers worldwide. Want an autographed edition? Go to offthehooksports.com. That's offthehooksports.com, and I'll personalize it for you. Celebrate 98 is a collector's item and a cherished gift that belongs to all fans of college football and the Tennessee Volunteers. All right, Dave Hooker will be back on the show on October the 16th, so uh, uh, mark that on your calendar and uh, call in with your sports questions on that day. Uh, So we're going to go over here. Jill Mayer has a pretty interesting question here. Uh, All questions are interesting, but this one is one that I kind of wonder about myself. She says, I was going through some of my dad's stuff and found some exposed, undeveloped film. I know the quality will be questionable, but is there some place you recommend I can get it developed? That's because uh, there's not a lot of those places around anymore. You don't see the okay. yeah. photo map. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what part of the country you're in, but I know down here North in South Colorado. Texas, there's Colorado. Yeah. So if you're close by Denver, I think the camera store, I think Mike's Cameras um, does it. Um, but, um, yeah, there's not many places around that develop film anymore. Hmm. Not many places. You have to mail it in yeah, and get it mailed back. Places. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you want to buy all the stuff and do it yourself. <laughs> but that curiosity, Jill, you gotta, you gotta find out what's on there, don't you? <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> I know I would. Yeah. I actually took some of my grandpa's old I think it was my grandpa's old film rolls and had them developed and um, really wasn't anything interesting on it, but it was still, you know, it was the, the wonder, you know, I wonder, I wonder what this was. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, thanks for the question, Jill. Now, yeah. uh, Angie, photography isn't the only thing that you do. You've got some other hobbies like traveling. Tell us about that. What kind of places have you traveled? Oh, man, I love to travel. Travel is is definitely my passion and my husband's passion, Jeff. Uh, so we've been we've been to the world's most northern town in the world in a on an island called Salbar Island, and the place the town is called Longyearbyen. It's um, wow, real close to Norway, but. Um, but it's also very close to Russia. And you have, you can live there. Anybody in the entire world could live there without a visa because everybody is a native. Wow. 
and you cannot you cannot die on that island. You can't be you can't have a baby on that island. <laughs> you can't even have a cat on the island. <laughs> because of the well, bird population. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Now we went there in search of polar bears. Oh, of course. Oh, cool. Yeah. Did you find any? Oh, yeah. Yep, we found some polar bears. We spent eight days on a ship. And then then we go to Africa a lot, and we go to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park a lot. Um, We're going to go photograph the um, sloth bears this year in Sri Lanka. I can't sure sure Sri Lanka. I can't I have yeah. A, yeah, I have a really hard time saying that name for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna be going there in April and I'm really looking forward to that. Um they also have I think he said the largest leopard um is in that region as well. So it's gonna be a long flight, but I think it'll be worth it. Oh yeah, definitely. Have you had any close yep. encounters that uh, were hair raising, close calls, uh, almost got stumped <laughs> by that hippopotamus kind of stuff? Oh, uh, let's see. There was this one day in Botswana. Um, we were photographing this this mother elephant and her and her baby, and we were parked in the truck, and she was kept coming closer and closer and closer to us, and she was really swinging her trunk and just flipping her tail. And then she picks up a stick and she throws it at us. Hmm. And so the, the guide starts up the truck and he backs up the truck to get away from her. And she goes over to the tree that we were sitting underneath and she starts scratching her butt on the tree because we were too close to her scratching tree. Oh. <laughs> and then shortly after that, we left there, and we got stuck in a sinkhole in Africa. We, so we're wow. stuck. There's nobody else around, and our radio is, had just broke, so we had no line of communication. Cell phones didn't work. <laughs> wow. We have another truck that comes over, and they hear us revving the engine, trying to get out of the sinkhole that we're in, and he says, the guys are like, oh, we were just photographing this pride of lion, and they're coming your way. And we're like, great. So they tried to push us out, and they couldn't get us out, and so they radioed for help. And, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a little nerve-wracking, but we made it out alive, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the pictures to prove it. Right? I got the pictures to prove it. Yeah, that was that was that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, you you if you know somebody that's heading to Africa to take photos on a safari, you're worried about them getting eaten by a lion. Really, what it comes down to is their phone getting stolen by a spider monkey. Usually, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're troublemakers. That's for sure. Hmm. So, uh, your, hus- your husband Jeff is a photographer. Does he travel with you? Oh yeah, yeah. He is a photographer too. He um he didn't actually. He wasn't really into photography when I met him, and then we started traveling to Yellowstone and Tetons, and he got tired of sitting in the car while I was taking all the pictures, so he decided he was going to buy a camera, and now he's been photographing now for probably 15 years, and he is he's an excellent photographer. He just never shows any of his stuff on Facebook, and trying to get stuff out of him to, for me to put on our website is almost like pulling teeth. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like we need yep. to put out a book by him. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, we're talking to celebrated wildlife photographer Angie Birmingham, talking about her new book, Journey Through the Lens. It's a good how-to book for people of all skill levels. And we've still got time for another call or two if you want to squeeze one in, people. The phone number is 516-453-9902. We're going to be back to wrap up with Angie after these commercials. Yeah, I'm going to throw out a comment here from uh, X. 
Uh, this is from Robert G. Willescroft. He says, you need to check out Copper Canyon in Chihuahua, Mexico. Way bigger than the Grand Canyon. So, uh, there you go. Oh. All cool. right. I'm making a note of it right world now. traveler right there. <laughs> All right. We will be right back. In 1948, eight-year-old Kay is at Oakdale, the Lapeer State Home in Michigan, where people of all ages with physical and mental aberrations come to live. Kay wonders why she is here and if she will ever leave. She cares for an infant who will not let anyone else feed her, and she has friends, especially a boy her age she calls Toe. When Kay and Toe grow close as teens, she discovers the home has scheduled surgery that will change her life. With the clothes she's wearing and the file containing her life story, Kay flees late one dark night. Toe tries to chase after her, but a fateful accident robs him of the chance to seek the love of his life. Will Kay ever experience the kind of family she has longed for? Published in jacketed hardcover, softcover, and all ebook editions by Fresh Ink Group, Nell Cooper's Nowhere to Go But Tomorrow is a historically accurate coming of age story about identity, belonging, and learning to choose one's own destiny. Read Nell Cooper's Nowhere to Go But Tomorrow. A husband writes about his romance, marriage, and life with the woman of his dreams. Moments of love and intimacy build a strong relationship that cannot be torn apart by her history of sexual abuse and eventual descent into dementia and Alzheimer's. Proudly published by Fresh Ink Group in jacketed hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats, I Remember Judy is a heartfelt memoir and tribute by Verwain Greenhoe. He shares with us the joy, love, intimacy, and happiness of 40-plus years. When his wife could no longer remember it, Verwain Greenhoe remembers it for her. In I Remember Judy, A Love Story. All right. Wayne is out there in the audience tonight, so uh, there's there's that. Um, now, Angie, uh, before we wrap things up, uh, do you have any advice for younger, up and coming photographers or people, even the older ones who are just starting to take up photography? Mm, I mean, just get behind the shutter or get behind the viewfinder and just keep clicking that shutter because you're not going to get any better if you don't take the pictures. Experience. There yep. you go. Yep. Yep. Come join advice. me for a workshop. That's excellent advice. Yeah, definitely. Especially if, uh, anybody who is anywhere near the Texas area, you, you definitely want to pay attention to when those are available or if you can travel to Texas as well. But uh, Angie, how do people find you? How do people learn about these workshops? How do they follow you? Do you have a newsletter? Do you have a website? Uh, what are your social media handles? Let's lay it all out there so people know who and where you are. Oh, I've got uh, I got the website for jeffandangiephotography.com and that one is my adult workshops. And then I also have a non-profit, non-profit for kids who are wanting to learn about photography, and that is sharpshooterphoto.org, and photo is spelled F-O-T-O. And all the kids uh, can attend the workshops on a scholarship, and if they don't have a camera, I got one that I'll put in their hands and so Ooh. they can get some experience and cool. see if they enjoy it. Yeah. Yep, and then as far as social media goes, um, Jeff and Angie Photography um, across the board and WTF Stop across the board. Okay. All right, and of course, if anybody wants to get a hold of Angie and hasn't found a better way to do it, we've got a contact form at freshinggroup.com. Just send us a note. We'll make sure we pass it along to her. So our guest has been Angie Birmingham, wildlife photographer and uh, renaissance woman, we'll call her. 
And the book is <laughs> Journey Through the Lens, A Creative Guide to Wildlife Photography. And it is out now. You can get your hardcover edition. That's a very nice premium color printed hardcover edition with a case laminate cover. A little pricey, but it's the high quality version. And then we've got a paperback edition that's a little bit more affordable. And of course, all the digital editions, all your favorite ebook formats from Kindle to Nook to Kobo, you name it. If you buy it in ebook form, it's out there. Journey Through the Lens by Angie Birmingham. Thanks again for being on the show, Angie. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Now, those of you who are familiar with uh, Jan Sykes, you can look forward to meeting her again. Next week on the show, her new book, A Noble Bargain, book two in the Bargainer series, is in pre-sale right now. And then who do we have after that, B? After that, we're bringing back Janelle Janelle Jordan, and uh, she's got her new book coming out. So uh, uh, that's not out yet, is it? The, uh, no. The reality of the, the leadership book? That's Yeah. Yeah, that's the reality of leadership. Um that's probably going to be early next week that we'll get that thing up. Okay, so by so, next week's show, so we should have that out. Yeah, I was going to say, we may have that out by the time uh, she's on the show next oh. Wednesday. Uh, that's, so, she's, uh, in two, she's in two weeks, so yeah, we'll weeks, have that yeah, out, weeks. definitely. Yeah. And then in the weeks after that, uh, we've got Dave Hooker scheduled. He mentioned uh, him earlier. We're also going to be having Braden Dexter Green, the photographer who called in tonight and talked to Angie, Robert G. Willis Croft, and uh, a couple of other scoundrels. Who, who else, Beam? Yeah, we will be uh, reaching out to uh, G. William Weatherly. We're publishing a, a novel of his coming up soon. Uh, Verwayne Greenhall, we're working on a couple of his books, uh, so, or another one of his books. So we're going to have him back on in the coming weeks and months. Uh, Patricia A. Guthrie, whom you heard from tonight, uh, calling in with a question. She'll be back on as well. And Robert McKenzie, who uh, left a comment there on Twitter, uh, or X, as the kids call it these days. So we'll have Robert McKenzie back in because he's got the Chair 5 coming out here before too long, and uh, we're looking forward to that. So keep your eyes and ears on that newsletter, everybody. Get get signed up for the newsletter if you don't have it so you know who's going to be in the guest seat each week from week to week. Yeah. Now, if you haven't already ordered your copy, get out there now. It's Angie Birmingham's Journey Through the Lens, A Creative Guide to Wildlife Photography. Uh, it's been great having you on the show, Angie. We look forward to having you back when your next book comes out and to hearing more about the workshops and uh, all the fun things that you do. And we'd like to share some of your photos in the newsletter every now and then, if you'll be uh, all right. nice enough to share them with us, too. So thanks all again. Right. And thanks for everybody who called in tonight. We appreciate the participation. Yeah. It always makes things more interesting. And we'll see everybody next week with Yes, Jan Sykes. All right. Hi, Thank everybody. you. You're listening to The Voice of India. You've been a part of Voice of India, a production of Fresh Ink Group. Spread the word, support our guests, then find us at freshinkgroup.com and be sure to hashtag Fresh Ink Group.